God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. I pray that you are doing great. I pray that you are healthy. I pray that you're being taken care of. I pray that God is really smiling upon you today. And I want to welcome each and every one of you again to another one of our sermons. Uh, we have been doing a sermon series starting in the month of September called Facing Our Giants. Yeah, that's right. Facing Our Giants. So New Destiny, listen, I want to allow you to embark on this beautiful, wonderful sermon series, which is really going to bless you because... We know that giants, you know, have always been described as these big, immense creatures, you know, 10 foot tall, 9 foot tall. Some in the Bible may even say they were over 100 feet tall, whatever it was. And we know the story of David and Goliath, how David, you know, with just one sm uh, smooth stone, you know, destroyed a, a great giant that was standing between him and his destiny. But giants are much more than just big, great creatures, you know. I want to speak to you all today about the origin of giants. You know, where did giants come from? And I'm not talking about those grotesque, big uh, uh, creatures. I'm talking about the giants that we create in our lives. Amen. So listen, stay tuned. Grab your Bible. <clears throat> grab your pen and paper, you know, to start taking notes. I'm going to mention a lot of great things and we're going to dive into this awesome word of God. Amen. Amen. Would you join me in some prayer? Thank you. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, God, and we praise you for this time that you've given us, oh God. Father, we pray that you help us decrease and you increase, oh Lord. Father, we pray, oh God, that you will give us, oh God, revelation, oh God, upon revelation. Father, that in all our getting, let us get an understanding, oh God. Father, lead us, oh God, to the understanding of your word, oh God, that we can truly, oh God, bask, oh God, and enjoy, oh God, the meat of your word on today, oh God. Father, I pray, oh God, even for those that are under the sound of my voice, oh God, those, oh God, who are watching this message, hearing this message, oh God, Father, I pray that you bless them with a special anointing, Lord God. Bless them with the hunger and the thirst, Lord God, after your righteousness, Lord God, that they can truly, Lord God, be in field, Lord God, with the word that you've given them on today, Lord God. Father, give us, Lord God, even the discernment, Lord God, to be able to identify those giants in our lives that we can be ready to take them down by any means necessary. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. So again, I'm excited. <clears throat> Uh, to be with you today teaching the Word of God. I got a couple of things that I want to mention to you. I have so much, but I probably won't be able to get it all out in today's servants, uh, sermon. But, uh, you know, nevertheless, you know how I do. We can definitely continue, uh, maybe even create a Bible study from this. But I want to speak to you all about this title that really, you know, God has given to us for the month of September. It's called Facing our giants, facing our giants, or facing your giants, right? And, and you know, we know that the Bible speaks about giants. We know a very great story about the, the story of David and Goliath. And, you know, one of our very own, Pastor Ebony, she did a great job, phenomenal job last week talking about that same story of David and Goliath and how David really overcame uh, this giant that was standing in the midst of his destiny, you know. And one of the things that I got even from that beautiful sermon that uh, Pastor Ebony was, was, was speaking about was that <clears throat> when 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 David, you know, called Goliath an uncircumcised Philistine, you know, he was referring to him that he, that he was not a, a consecrated, he was not a chosen vessel of God, you know. Though, yes, Goliath was... Uh, per se chosen for that task, but he wasn't the acquired chosen vessel David was. And sometimes we have to understand it that way, that though we overcome obstacles in our life, God may choose certain obstacles to lead us into our destiny, but we are the one that he keeps. We're the one that he cherishes. We're the chosen vessel of the Lord to be able to bring him glory in the midst of that obstacle. Amen. So, so David recognized that. David recognized that, that the Goliath was just but a mere obstacle that stood between him and his destiny. And not just that, another great thing that I caught from that message was that giants are name changers for us. Uh, what, what do I mean by that? Well, think about it. Uh, before David uh, slayed Goliath, he was just mere David. But after David slayed Goliath, he was called a giant killer, the giant slayer. So his name was changed based on what he did, what he endeavored. And then you have to understand that sometimes giants, whether they come by a certain obstacle in our relationship or a certain obstacle in our jobs or our business or whatever it is, that giant is there basically to bring a name change to who you are to be, who you will be in the name of God. Because you are a victor. You are more than a conqueror. You are strengthened by Christ who is in you. Amen. So we have to understand that these things, these giants come to really uh, bring to us a name change, uh, a reputation per se of who we really uh, <clears throat> need to be in God. Amen. 
So I want to share with you today, not, not just speak a little bit about the giants of our lives, right? Because giants come in many shape, form, and sizes. But, but where do they come from? The origin of giants. And even though we don't see these gigantic, grotesque creatures in today's day and age, are they still around? Are they still very much vivid? If not in a physical form, are they here in a spiritual form? That's what I want to kind of bask in right now because believe it or not, we are facing giants each and every day. And they're not, they may not be as big and as physical and, you know, one-eyed monsters or whatever like they were, you know, back in the days. But they're still here in a, in a spiritual form that basically we have to combat. We have to overcome these giants in order to really you know, change your name and embark in our destiny. So I want to share with you a, a familiar scripture from the book of Genesis, uh, <clears throat> chapter six. Now I want to kind of break this down the best that I can because I, I don't, I don't have a lot of time to really dive into the depthness of the word uh, today. But I want to give you bits and pieces later on that maybe you can do your own study or listen. You have the questions, ask us back to the question, uh, comments in the day in, in, in the. Um, in the video right there so that we can, you know, answer more questions concerning this or even turning this into a Bible study. But I want to show you just the origin of giants. And I want to kind of correlate that into what we're going through right now when it comes to the mystery of lawlessness that is that it speaks about in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, which I'm going to kind of cross-reference the two. But I want to read this to you just to kind of like get the ball rolling. And I'm going to let the Holy Spirit just do his thing. Amen. Look what it says. Genesis chapter 6. I'm um, reading from the King James Version, and it talks about um, <clears throat> the origin of giants. It says, Now it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and the daughters were born to them, and the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were beautiful, and they took uh, for wives for themselves and all whom they chose. Verse 3 says, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not strive with men forever, for he is indeed his flesh, and yet his days shall be 120 years. Verse 4, And then there were giants on the earth in those days, and also afterwards the sons of God came into the daughters of men, and they bore children to them. Those were the mighty men of, of old, the men of renown. Now, according to scholars, it seems that these uh, uh, sons of God, which were the, these angels, these fallen angels, which were referred to as the watchmen, these angels were supposed to watch over men during that period of time. But the lust in those these angels, when they saw the fairity of the daughters of men, they became lustful, lustful and then they, they, they took for themselves these women as wives, and then now they intertwined and had this intercourse between uh, these fallen angels and the daughters of men, and therefore, you know, according to the scriptures right here, their offspring were these giants. Now, I know it sounds very far-fetched, this story, but nevertheless, it's biblical, and I can give you so many other pointers of which, uh, you know, it, it, it reflects this, um, this story and it brings some truth to it. But now what we're seeing right now, what I want you to really pay close attention is, is the intertwining or the intermittence between the daughters of men, you have a natural nature, and the sons of God in the spiritual nature, which is fallen. And when the two come together, that's what brings forth or bores a giant. So now a giant is not necessarily the offspring of the two, which physically is talking about here, but it's really more of a, of a consequence or I want to say a result of, of lawlessness or, or this, this, this falling spiritual nature and this ignorant human nature. When the two come together, what they bore, what they bring forth is what is referenced to as a giant. I want to share with you another story. Just so we can bring a little bit more light uh, to the Word of God, but follow me to the Book of Luke, and you you, know, you read this story before, and it's the story of the the prodigal son. And again, I'm not going to read the whole story, but if you see at the beginning of the story when Jesus starts to speak about this lost son, he says a certain man had two sons, and the younger one of them said to his father, "Father, give me the portion of good that falls to me." So he divided them and his livelihood. So we know the story that this young man asks for his portion. The father gives it to him and he takes his portion and then he goes out and he parties and he wastes to the point where 
He gets to a point where he's in one. He becomes so poor, so desolate, so destitute that he now realizes, man, why am I perishing here? Let me repent and go back to my father. Well, what I want you to focus on is that at the beginning of the story, no one created this falling situation. No one created this situation in which the, 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 the prodigal or the lost son uh, came to find himself in, but himself. He was the one who asked the father for the portion. He was the one who now went and wasted the portion. He was the one who married, you know, the prostitutes and got himself involved in whatever it was in the world. He was the one who made those decisions. Now, when we start to ask ourselves, where did these decisions come from? Well, according to James chapter four, they came from within himself. And, and, and the, the point that I'm trying to make is that sometimes we mingle what is, what is lawlessness or we mingle something within ourselves, you know, a fallen nature and bad decisions, and therefore we bear these giants for ourselves. So to answer the questions, where do giants come from? They come from us. We create them. When we see the correlation, when we see the story of the fallen angels, right? And then now mixing with the daughters of men, we know that the fallen angel is really talking about a lawlessness or a satanic spirit of what we're dealing with right now, an antichrist spirit in this world. So we see the, the lawlessness and, and intermingle with our ignorant nature. And sometimes when we make these bad decisions, we create these giants for ourselves. We create these obstacles, these, these bad decisions, these situations that therefore become so great, so big that we make ourselves look small in front of these situations. Now, these giants may not be a physical <clears throat> um, monster or a physical grotesque creature, but then nevertheless, they could be certain situations in our marriage. They could be situations in our ministry, situations in our jobs, in our careers, with our kids, because we made ill decisions. We made wrong choices or we mingled an ignorant nature with a fallen divine nature. And then therefore, when the two come together, we, we, we create these bad giants in our lives. But therefore, guess what? We have to take them down. We have to learn to come against them. We have to go how to, how to uh, strategize to really defeat these giants because they're just an obstacle that nevertheless, if we created them, we can take them out, right? It's like old school. I don't know if your mom ever told you this before she punishes you. I brought you into this world. I can take you out of this world too, right? So in, in, in retrospect, it's almost the same thing. You know, we create these things in ignorance. We create these things in fear. We create these things, you know, um, by, by impulse. And then these these things grow and they grow and they grow and they grow and sometimes we even feed these giants by allowing <clears throat> you know gossip to let it grow allowing fear to let it grow allowing you know depression to let it grow we start feeding these giants and they start getting bigger and bigger and right now <clears throat> right now excuse me and right now they may not mean anything to us but soon enough like the bible says sin when it grows and it gets bigger it's going to come back and it's going to ask for death right because the wages of sin is death so now we create these giants that are so big, so great, that therefore we ourselves become afraid of the very same thing we created. Again, I'm going to explain this one more time. So the daughters of men, which represents the human nature, the daughters of men, according to Genesis chapter 6, represents the human nature, right? So God has given us a human nature. But in that human nature, we have to also understand that we have a divine power through the Holy Spirit on the inside of us. So the Holy Spirit uses the power of the divine to allow us to birth into the natural the power that he calls us to have. It's just no difference than what the Holy Spirit conceived Jesus Christ and the Bible said, and the word became flesh, right? So that was a power, a divine power that when intermittent with, with the right nature, it became a powerful force here in this world. So, so just like the Bible tells us the life and death is in the power of our tongue, we have the power to procreate, we have the power to increase, we have the power to bring life, but we have to be very careful who we attach that power to, because just like we can bring life, we can also bring death. These fallen angels, not to get into a, a big discussion, but these fallen angels were under the order of the, of the mystery of lawlessness, which is what we call the Antichrist spirit at this time. There was an angel by the name of uh, 
uh, Sam Samasas, who, who basically was one of the fallen angels that was the leaders of these watchmen. These watchmen or these angels were supposed to watch over these, these, these uh, humans during this time, but they became lustful because of the element of free will. They became lustful and they wanted for themselves what God called them to protect. Have God ever called you to protect something or watch over something and you became lustful over it? Maybe God called you to pray for somebody and you became lustful over what you're praying for. Maybe God giving you a task and you became lustful over what God has given you for. We have to be very careful what God has placed us over. Sometimes God will send us to watch over a ministry or help somebody in ministry and we become lustful with that and therefore we want it for ourselves. We have to be very careful with the spirit and the mystery of lawlessness. The Bible tells us that the spirit of Antichrist is yet now here. We may not see him physically, but his spirit is here. That's what we're going through, what we're going through here in this world. We don't understand, uh, uh, you know, how children are being murdered. We don't understand the whole racial back and forth war. We don't understand, you know, the corrupt politician. We don't understand the hunger, the poverty. We don't understand, understand the, 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 the weapons of mass destruction. We don't understand all those things. But like James says in chapter 4, where the wrath, where the war, where the jealousy, where the envy come from? Doesn't it come from ourselves? We created these giants. Watch this. Let me read this to you because I want to be in the context of the scripture. But look at James chapter 4. Hallelujah. He says, <clears throat> pride and promote strife. He says, where do wars and fights come from among you? Do they not come from your desires for pleasure that war in your members? You lust and you do not have. You murder and covet and do not obtain uh, and cannot obtain. You fight and war, yet you do not have a cause uh, to why or you do, not, you do not ask. You ask and do not receive because you ask amiss that you may spend it in your own pleasure. So, so James is talking about where do these, these, these giants come from, these wars, these, these, these pestilence, these famine, where do they come from? They come from within us. They come from the law of, of lawlessness. They come from the mystery of lawlessness that is within us, that, that fallen nature that has been passed down from Adam, from the fall of sin. It comes from within us. That's why we need a Holy Spirit within us to govern us, to tell us what to do, how to do it, when to do it, why to do it. We cannot govern ourselves because when we're governing ourselves, we're going to be led by our own lust. Sometimes we think what's right and we're really not, uh, we're really wrong. Sometimes we think what somebody really needs and we're really wrong, but we need to give them what the Holy Spirit said to give them. That's why Paul was able to say, listen, I only preach Christ and him crucified. He also said, follow me as I am an imitator of Christ. See, we're living in the independent world, and I pray that this is blessing you. We're living in an independent world, and we believe that it's everybody free for all, everybody for themselves, but we have to submit to the rule of the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells us, I'm going to read to you in the scripture, that listen, the Holy Spirit will not thrive for us for, uh, strive for us for, uh, for a long time. There's going to come a time where the Holy Spirit is not going to be here. And, and, the, and the, the mystery of lawlessness, he who is bound, is going to be released. And you're going to see the revelation of the, the, the son of perdition, which is the Antichrist. These times are here now. And we created all these giants. We created the giant of war, the giant of famine, the giant of division, the giant of gossip, the giant of hate. The giant of murder, the giant of molestation, the giant of rape, the giant, you name it. There's so many giants out there. But the Bible has given us hope, has given us glory to say that just like David took out Goliath, Goliath was the sign for David's destiny. If Goliath had not stepped forward, David would not have acquired his destiny. Isn't it so awesome how God just called David for a mere task? He called David through his son, through his father, Jesse, to go and deliver what I like to call a pizza, right? Pizza with bread and cheese. Deliver a pizza to his brother. And in the midst of his obedience, he found his destiny. Now, his destiny did not look like David thought it would look. It did not come with a crown. It did not come with a robe. It did not come with a ring. But his destiny came in the form of a giant. A giant that was talking blasphemous words against him and against God. A giant that was standing in the midst of his destiny, a giant that looked greater than he did, 
to the eyes of others. But David not for once was able to see that perspective. He changed the perspective. He called them an unphilistine, uh, an uncircumcised Philistine. He called them an abomination. He knew that he was there to be a stepping stone into his future. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. What giants are you facing in today's day and age? What giants plague your mind? What giants come to torment? What giants come to rob sleep from you, peace from you, disturbance? What giants are there? Is it the giant of financial burden? Is it the giants of ministerial burden? Is it the giants of relationship burden? Is it the giants of, of children, of, of, of career? What giants come to burden you? Don't you know that those giants are there so that you can defeat them? You can overcome them. They're there to steal, kill, and destroy. They come to rob you of your destiny, rob you of your authority, rob you of your, uh, of your future. But you got to understand that you have a God that is greater than all those things. You have a God that has given you power. Power, that has given you a spirit of, of, of virtue, a spirit of a sound mind, a spirit of love. God has empowered you to overcome these giants. Otherwise, he would not allow them to live with you. Watch this. Watch this story. I love this story in the book of Numbers chapter 13. Glory be to God. And this is the time when which, <clears throat> excuse me, in which Moses sends the spies out into the promised land, into the land of Canaan at that time. And he sends the spies out. He says, listen, go and spy out the land. And he sends, I believe it's, it's 12 of them. And he tells them to spy the land. And, and 10 came back with a bad report. But I want you to read what it says towards the end. Because this place, yes, being flowing with milk and honey, but this place was so great. As a matter of fact, this place was so big that one cluster of grapes had to be carried between two people. That's how great things are for you. That's how great God made things for you. Sometimes you look at something and you'll be like, man, that's, that's too big for me to acquire. God called you to have a super dome church. Now that's too big for me to acquire. We, 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 I can't do that. I can't carry it by myself. But look what it says. As God sent them out to spy out the land. And indeed, indeed, the land was great. Indeed, the land was flowing with milk and honey. Indeed, the fruit of the land was great for them. Too great that it took two of them to carry. Look what it says at the end. <clears throat> verse 30, it says, and I'm reading from Numbers chapter 13, around verse 30. It says, then when Caleb quieted the people before Moses and said, let us go up once and take possession, for we are well able, able to overcome. But when the man who had gone up with him said, we are not able to go up against the people, for they are stronger than we. And they gave the children of Israel a bad report of the land which they had spied out, saying that the land through which they have gone as spies is a land that devours its inhabitants. And all the people whom we, we saw are men of great stature. And there we saw giants, the descendants of Anak, uh, who came from the giants. And watch this. This is what I want you to pay attention. And we were like grasshoppers in our own sight, and so we were in their sight. So watch this. The giants did not see them as grasshoppers. They saw themselves as grasshoppers. And then therefore they, they, they passed that perception from themselves onto their enemies. Wow. I hope that blessed you. I'm going to say that again. I said they did not see themselves as minuscule. They did not see themselves as less than. They, they, excuse me, the, the enemies did not see themselves as minuscule. The enemies did not see them as, as less than. They saw themselves as less than, as minuscules, as grasshoppers. And then they passed that perception to their enemies. And they said to the people, our enemies see us the way we see ourselves. My God, my God. You got to understand that you have to have a perception about who you are. <clears throat> David not for once, not for once, thought that he would not be able to overcome that, 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 that giant. He even said to himself, I overcame a bear and I overcame a lion. 
when they took the sheep, I went after it and I took it back. And if I can do that with a bear and a lion, I can definitely do that with this giant. Don't you know that God has been preparing you for the giants that are in your life? Don't you know that God has been prepping you? He has been exercising you with every spark that came out from the smitten steel when iron sharpens iron concerning your life. God has been preparing you. God has been preparing you from elementary school, from grade school, from junior high school, from high school. God has been preparing you with every fallen relationship he's been preparing you. With every fallen bill, God's been preparing you. With every back step that you give, God has been preparing you to come back stronger than ever. Your faith stronger than ever. Why? Because he's preparing you for this giant that you're about to face. Because no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Yeah, that's right. No giant formed against you shall prosper. No bill formed against you shall prosper. No firing shall for formed against you shall prosper. No bad relationship formed against you shall prosper. Because because God has a destiny for you to acquire. Sometimes we mingle these falling divine, uh, uh, <clears throat> I want to say, uh, false teachings, right? That, that's what's what the fallen angels represents. It represents a lawlessness. When you come against the things of God, maybe God called you to have faith in a situation. And you say, no, I can't do that. That is ill will. That is lawlessness. Imagine. If God said to you, I was talking to a friend of mine yesterday, if God said to you that you can do all things through Christ who empowers you, if God says that everything you put your hands to and your mouth to, <clears throat> excuse me, According to his will, you will flourish. If God says to you, Joshua, I will give you good success. If God says to you, Moses, I will always be with you. If God says to you, uh, uh, Peter, I will give you power amends, uh, uh, amongst anything that you can ever get. If God says to you all those great things that you can do, what would you be afraid of doing? The answer is nothing. I will put my hands to whatever God wills it to. I will speak whatever God wills me to. I will do whatever God calls me to do because I know that the power of God is with me. But yet, why do we still fear? Why do we still become intimidated? Because those things come from within us. I love when the Bible teaches us about sin and about temptation. And it says that no man has ever been tempted above anything that he is able to overcome. And what it means by that is that the enemy will not tempt you with something that is not tentuous towards you. Amen? For example, if you have a weakness with chocolate cake, listen, he's not going to bring strawberry shortcake. He's not going to bring vanilla. He's going to bring chocolate. Yes, because sometimes we expose our very own weaknesses. The Bible tells us who knows the very intent of a man's heart except the spirit of man himself. And sometimes we become vulnerable and we share our vulnerability even with our own enemies. Sometimes we share a vulnerability with some people that we think are close to us. I was reading this uh, story the other day online and it, and it really kind of intrigued me. And I believe somebody put it as a post and I was like, wow, you know, that, that's, that's true. But the story entailed uh, this woman who had a pet snake, a pet python, I believe what it was. And as she raised this pet python, this snake, from the little youth, you know, she fed it and the snake ate every day like normal. But one day the snake stopped eating, you know, it got big and it stopped eating. And for, for weeks at a time, it just stopped eating. And the woman loved the snake and, you know, she shared everything with the snake and didn't know what was wrong with the snake until she took the snake to the veterinarian. And the veterinarian came back and said, uh, listen, uh, did the snake stop eating? She said, yes. Uh, has the snake been looking at you? Yes. Has the snake been, uh, you know, regurgitating everything else that it has been consuming? He says, yes. So the veterinarian told the woman, well, you know what? The snake is sizing you up to eat you because it's looking at you. You're looking at the snake as a friend, but the snake is looking at you as prey. And the moral of the story is that sometimes we befriend things that really come to devour us. We are so close to the giants in our life that sometimes we can't even identify them. And God is calling us in this time to identify these giants and to put them down like David did. Let me share with you one more scripture that I think this is going to bless you. Go to the book of 2 Thessalonians. And if you look at... <clears throat> I want to read really the fourth verse. 
but I want to read from the, from the beginning, just to give you some revelation concerning this thing. And it talks about the mystery of lawlessness. And the reason that this is so important, this mystery of lawlessness, is because, again, it's a mystery. So everything is not revealed. Like the Bible says, our thoughts are not his thoughts, our ways are not his ways. And sometimes when we think we got it figured out, we really don't. Sometimes we think that we're doing good to somebody and we're really doing more harm than good. But look at what the scripture says, and I'm going to break it down the best that I can. And it talks about the great apostasy. Verse 1, chapter 2, 2 Thessalonians. Now, brethren, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and our gathering together to him, we ask you not to be soon shaken in mind or troubled, either by spirit or by word or by letter, as if, as, as if from us, though the day of Christ had come. Let no one deceive you by any means, for the day will not come unless the falling away comes first. So it talks about the apostasy. There's many people that say they're believers, that say they're, they're in Christ, but are going to fall off that belief, that faith. It says, but the falling away, unless the falling away comes first, the man of sin is revealed and the son of perdition, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God, or that is worship, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. And it's talking about the Antichrist. It is saying that the apostasy will not come until uh, uh, the, uh, his, his revelation, the revelation of the Antichrist. Then Paul goes on and says, Do you not remember that when I was still with you, I told you these things? And now you know what is restraining, that he may be revealed in his own time, for the mystery of lawlessness is already at work. Only he, capital H-E, talking about the Holy Spirit, who now restrains, the Holy Spirit restrains us from that lawlessness, who now restrains will do so until he is taken out of the way. So in other words, Paul is saying over here that the Holy Spirit restrains us from creating this, this, this lawlessness in our life. The Holy Spirit restrains us from creating these giants in our life, but nevertheless, there are some instances where we have created these giants. Think about it, the bad decisions that we made. And after we make those bad decisions, then we're pleading with God and we're saying, oh God, remove this thorn from my side. But who created this thorn? Who created this war? Who created this, this animosity? Think about it. It's, it's as simple as reconciliation. Maybe you have an alt with somebody, or maybe you feel like you've been wronged, or you've been uh, treated in injustice. Well, it's really up to you to say, you know what? I forgive. I'm going to let this fire be quenched down by, like Paul said, I'll suffer the wrong. And I understand all the injustice that's going on. I'm not saying, oh, you know, turn the other cheek, or let's be a punk about it. But what I'm saying is, you cannot uh, consume fire with fire. The Bible says that a, that a soft answer quenches the fire. But that's not what we're doing. That's not what we're doing in this society. We're trying to go an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. We're trying to, to, to go against. We're trying to add fuel to the fire. And now in this mystery of lawlessness, this spirit of lawlessness that is now in the world, we created these giants. And now it's up to us to take these giants down with the strategy that God gave David. God gave David five smooth stones. God told David to use what he knows. God told David to listen, be confident in me. Like Pastor Ebony said last week, uh, it seemed that uh, Saul wanted to give uh, David his armor. and He could not fight in the armor because it was too big. See, sometimes people will try to give you their own strategy. But don't you know that you have your own strategy for your own giants? You cannot defeat other uh, your giants with other people's stuff. Stop trying to put other people's stuff, other people's doctrine. Like it says right here, do not be tossed, do not be shaken or troubled <clears throat> by either spirit or word or letter. It's talking about different teachings or people are telling, well, this is that and that is this. Do not be consumed with false prophets or false Christ here and there, but you have to be led of your spirit. You have to be led by the Holy Spirit within you who restrains, who holds back, who pushes you forward, who's giving you the go, who's giving you the green light, the red light, the spirit of God who empowers you. You can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. This is not the time now to be, uh, you know, assert by certain people or certain things to tell you to do this, to do that. But what is God telling you in your spirit to overcome that giant, that giant of malice, 
that giant of, of, of poverty, that giant of depression, that giant of hurt, of pain, of unforgiveness. See, giants are not going to be these big, grotesque creatures like you saw in the Old Testament. But giants now are things that we have created by allowing these fallen doctrines, these fallen angels, these, these fallen uh, 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 mystery of lawlessness, the spirit of antichrist. When we allow that to have intercourse with our own nature, <clears throat> we give forth these giants. Think about it. When the enemy comes in, like the Bible says, like a flood, will not God raise up a standard? But sometimes when we are wronged, we allow the enemy to whisper sweet nothings in our ear. And then we give birth to anger, to hate. The Bible says that we can be angry but sin not. But we give birth to that physical sin. Think about it. Somebody says something against you, your idea, you automatically get mad. Oh, forget you. I don't, I don't need you. Oh, be gone with you. And see, those vocals, those actions were given for. This be, those was what become the giants in our lives. But now it's time to take him down. It's amazing how when David uh, used his sling shot and used five smooth stones and only used one to try to take out a giant, the Bible said that he was confident in what God has given him. God has given you your own experience. That's what the slingshot represents. God has given your own experience, your own knowledge, your own wisdom to be able to overcome this situation. I know sometimes we don't want to be exposed. Sometimes we don't want to, you know, uh, tell everybody our business. But sometimes you got to shame the devil in order to give God glory. Let us stop trying to fix it on our own. But let the Spirit of God help us defeat these giants in our lives. Otherwise, we're going to keep creating them and creating them, and they're going to overpopulate the earth. But you, you, saints of the Most High God, you are called to be a giant killer. You are the, the direct descendant of the greatest giant killer that ever lived, David himself. And from David came Jesus, and from Jesus comes you. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Listen, I wish I could really, you know, break this down a little bit more. Uh, when it talks about the origin of giants, you know, uh, and it talks about, uh, you know, all, all the, the, the mystery of lawlessness and all these things. Maybe I'll do that in a Bible study. But I really came today here to encourage you, to allow you to know that, listen, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. That no matter what giants come before you, those giants are strategically designed to be a stepping stone onto your destiny. Giants are name changers for you. Giants are, are, are gate holders to your destiny. Giants are, are now uh, the obstacle that allows you to enter into the prosperous land that they have for you. They are keepers of your destiny. Just like you saw in the story of Numbers 13, these giants, God said, I have given you the land of Canaan. I have given you the land flowing with milk and honey. God said, go and apprehend it. Go and take it. These giants, they were just gatekeepers for you. They were keeping what is yours. Now it's time for you to apprehend what belongs to you. Do not be intimidated. Do not be afraid. Do not be, uh, you know, do not step back because God called you to be a giant killer. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. You shall overcome in this day. Amen. To God be the glory. So listen, I pray that you were blessed on today. We're going to continue this sermon series as we go forth, you know, facing our giants. Amen. Giants are much more than just big grotesque creatures, but there are things that we create for our life. You know, whether it's a job opportunity, you may think, man, I will never get that job. Or maybe it's a relationship and I'll never get that relationship. Or maybe you're going through something and say, I'll never overcome this. Listen, the devil is a liar. You can do all things to Christ who strengthens you. You are a giant killer. You were made for such a time as this. And you have to encourage yourself. If nobody else will, you have to encourage yourself. Amen. God allows giants to step forward so that you can see the glory in you, through you, and God operating you, operating uh, in you as well. Amen. So listen, be encouraged, be blessed. 
We're going to see you again. Uh, a couple of announcements that I have. This Tuesday, September 15 at 7 p.m., we will commence again our Bible study. Amen. So please tune in. We're going to send uh, Zoom login information so that way you can, um, you know, share it or get in on the Zoom uh, we, it's going to be more interactive, so you're going to ask questions, so you're going to have your Bible, your pen, your paper, your footnotes, whatever it is. We're going to really, um, you know, interact during that time, so we're going to do that and also try to uh, live stream it also on uh, our social media. And also, listen, we want to thank you all for supporting us. Thank you all for being with us, and we're going to, you know, just encourage you to continue to sow your tithes and your offerings. And, you know, we have two ways to give. You can do it through Cash App with the uh, dollar sign, uh, New Destiny worship or you can go to givelify and find us new destiny worship center as well there amen so listen we thank you again let us pray before we exit this meeting and let us give god glory father in the name of jesus we thank you and we praise you for who you are lord god father we thank you specifically for new revelation new man lord god father thank you for getting us unstuck from religiosity. Thank you for giving us, Lord God, a relationship, Lord God. Father, thank you for transitioning us, Lord God, even in this movement and not making us a monument, Lord God. Thank you for the modern ways of teaching us, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God, for the airways, the byways, Lord God, that we're able to reach one another, Lord God. And thank you for keeping us even in the midst of this pandemic, Lord God. Father, thank you, Lord God, for the transition that you made to your living word, Lord God, that you have given us. And Father, we pray for those who are under the sound of my voice, that even if they don't know Jesus Christ, Lord God, that they can pray this prayer, that they can invite Jesus into their heart and say, Lord, I receive you. I know that you are the Son of God. I know that you died for my sins. And as I receive you and as I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart, I am now saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you pray that prayer with us, we believe that the Holy Spirit shall visit you shortly and he will give you all the great tools that you need to understand all of this stuff that we were talking about. Amen. And again, New Destiny, thank you for your encouragement. We pray that you remain encouraged. And if at any time you need prayer, you need support, you need encouragement, or you just want to talk the word, listen, you can call us, you can reach us. You know, we have our website, we have our email, you know, and just encourage us as we're also facing giants as well as the ministry, but we know that we are giant killers and this too we shall overcome. Amen. Listen, God bless you. See you all soon. Peace.